The Kelton class cruiser was the strongest ship the Cardassians had ever built. This ship unfortunately didn't last for very long. For the fleet that they had constructed of this mighty vessel was completely annihilated when they went to attack the Dominion in the first engagement of the Dominion War with the Romulans. This loss was too much for the Cardassian Empire to bear. Unfortunately, their infrastructure didn't have the budget to rebuild this fleet again. And so once again, they went back to the Galore class cruiser, which had been their steady cruiser for generations. Unfortunately, the Galore class cruiser did have many design flaws. One of the most evident design flaws seen within the Galore cruiser was the fact that its most powerful and primary weapon was located right underneath its bridge, limiting its firing arc. Many other design flaws were seen, but unfortunately, not much could be done. At the point that the Klingon Empire had invaded the Cardassian Union, the Cardassian Union, believing that their technology and culture was superior, realized the evidence of their error of their ways. Unfortunately, they do not have the power or technology to take on a minor or even major races of the other Star Trek universe. Their ships were just too far old and not efficient enough to take on the more advanced ships seen in the empires. Toward the end of the Dominion War, the Dominion and the Cardassian had begun designing large capital class ships for the Cardassian Union to substitute and replace that of the Galor class and Kelton class cruisers. These ships were very large and powerful and were equivalent to that of galaxy class starships. Unfortunately, after the collapse of the Cardassian Union, the budget for these ships didn't exist and only a handful of them were able to be created. One of the major reasons for the stagnation of technology was Cardassian Doctrine. Cardassian Doctrine stated that Cardassian technology and design and people were superior than everyone else. This evidently was wrong once the Cardassians had fought the Klingons. During the Cardassian Klingon War, it became very evident that the Klingon ships were far superior than the Galar class cruisers that were trying to defend their borders. The Cardassians lost this war and it became absolutely evident that the Cardassian people and technology was far insufficient to take on the overwhelming forces of the Klingons. Within a few weeks, the Klingon Empire had decimated the Cardassian Union. The Cardassian Union, out of desperation, was forced to sign an alliance with the Dominion. At this point, this is when the Dominion technology started entering Cardassian technology and making hybrid ships. And this ideology no longer existed with the Cardassian people. With the belief system that Cardassian technology was superior to all others, completely dwarfed and diminished after meeting the Dominion and fighting the Klingons, um, a hybrid of ships was created. One of these ships was considered the Hatati. The Hatati was a giant dreadnought class Cardassian cruiser. The ship was massive in size and dwarfed anything that any of the Cardassians had ever created before or the Federation. The ship was monstrously large. Um, unfortunately, it never made it into battle and only one or two were created after the war due to this incredibly huge budget. After learning the lessons between the Dominion War, the Cardassians' ideology had changed. They decided to adopt technology from different races, and so they began creating small attack ships which were easy to build and were cheap. Many of these designs began entering the field, and one of the main reasons for this is because their infrastructure was completely decimated from the Klingon and the Dominion War, they didn't have the shipyards to build ships anymore, so they were forced to build small attack ships to defend their borders. At this point, Cardassia had next to no ships left, and only a few Galore-class cruisers were left to defend the Empire. They needed a small and cheap war ships to start guarding the empires from other minor races as well as piracy. It became very common because there were just no ships to guard their sectors anymore. So eventually this design came about. This very powerful design was known as the Norin class ship and it became the mainstream of the Cardassian technology. It was a hybrid of many different races. This ship was quite fast and maneuverable and had quite a lot of armament and didn't have the disabilities that the Galar had with the insufficient firing arcs. The bridge was moved backwards and its firing arc was put in the front of the ship so that it had almost a 360 degree firing angle and this ship became quite an efficient killing machine for the Cardassians.
After the end of the Dominion War and with the replacement of the newer and more advanced small attack ships using different races technology, it became evident that something needed to be done about the Galore class. Due to the infrastructure of the Cardassian people, they didn't have the technology or the time or the resources to actually completely rebuild a whole new fleet of large attack ships like the Galores and the Kelton class. So they decided that the Kelton class was just too expensive to mass produce and they decided to take some of the retrofitting of the Galore class cruisers. Several hundred of the Galore class cruisers did survive, but unfortunately they were not able to fully take all the different upgrades of the Kelton class cruiser, but since that they were derived from the same design, they were able to take a majority of these newer upgrades. Some of the upgrades were some of the weapon systems and the shield matrix. This gave the Galore about half the firepower of the original Galaxy class starship, uh, as known as the Enterprise D, and it had about half the shields. Even though this was nowhere close to the Dominion version or Rift version of the Galaxy class starship, this did put the ship at par with um, some of the newer and more capable ships seen within the other empires. After the upgrades of the Galar class, it was decided the Galar class would be the standard attack ship for deep space combat. The reason for this is the Galar was made to be an all-purpose vessel. It was quite large, could hold quite a bit of troops or supplies, and was known to carry quite a few fighters if necessary. This made the Galar class with its new upgrades and improvements a very powerful ship to be dealt with.